bypassing the other circuitry. Oh! Ah, this synth is a beast. This is the Mother 32. It's an analog semi-modular synthesizer made by Moog in Asheville, North Carolina. Today, we're gonna take a look at its sound generators, and I'm gonna show you some tricks on how to recreate the sounds of instruments and the sounds of the very natural world around you. Let's start with what makes the synth an analog synthesizer. Analog synths make sounds generated by circuits that produce electrical vibrations, and those are called oscillators. Oscillators. The oscillator circuit in Mother 32 will create a sound that goes through all the other circuits in the synth to then shape and refine that tone. There's no limit to what it can do. And all of this is controlled by electrical voltage. For example, the higher the voltage that reaches the oscillator, the higher the pitch the oscillator is going to produce. Let's start here with the oscillator controls. Mother 32 has one voltage controlled oscillator circuit and one white noise generator. And you can mix between them using this knob here. The main oscillator can produce either a sawtooth wave or a square wave. Now, what's cool about the square wave is that you can change the on and off ratio of the wave right here using this knob called pulse width. So at 12 o'clock, the wave is gonna be 50% on, 50% off, but by turning this knob, you can get either more on time or more off time. And this is gonna let you play around with the various harmonics generated by the square wave. Wait a moment. I just said the word harmonics, so I think I'm getting a little ahead of myself. So let's take it back to the oscillator. You can tune the oscillator using this frequency knob and you can play notes using the onboard keyboard. Speaking of notes, it's probably a good time to mention that because this is analog circuitry, ambient temperature can actually affect the performance it's actually in the manual for you to warm the machine up for about 20 minutes before jamming. So that is your voltage controlled oscillator circuit. There you have it. And this circuit is designed to just blast out its sound, everything it's got to the rest of the synth. So if I was to patch directly into the audio output, bypassing the other circuitry. <laughs> but yeah, if you don't want to turn into a skeleton and you want a warmer, less bright tone, then you're going to want to filter some of the sound coming out of the oscillator circuit. And this is where the filter section of the synthesizer comes into play. This is the cutoff knob that filters out frequencies either on the high end or the low end. Like an EQ if you've ever messed with one of those in your digital audio workstation. Cutting out the high frequencies is going to result in a warmer tone and cutting out the low frequencies is going to sound a little thinner and a little bit more searing. A high frequency howl, very high. This is really fun to mess with once you have a sequence running and then slowly mess with the frequencies while it's running. This is the resonance knob and this is also going to remove some of the sound only it's going to accentuate the point at which the filter cutoff happens. It can result in a loud tone of its own. You can even get this tone to harmonize along with the main oscillator. But in terms of sound design, it's gonna make your sound a little bit thinner, but add a nice emphasis on just the frequency where the cutoff happens. This is especially good for filter sweeps or for percussive stuff. So now you can generate sound and control many of its tonalities. But what if you want that sound to have some movement to it? The low frequency oscillator is another oscillator or voice on the synthesizer. This circuit is designed for really low notes, most of the time so low that you can't hear them, unless you were a snake. Apparently snakes can only hear low frequencies and they can't hear you screaming about the fact that there's a snake there. So this circuit is almost always gonna be used to affect the main sound being generated. And this is called modulation. The most simple example of this is modulating the pitch, which will sound like a vibrato. So I have my LFO set to a medium rate here, but my tone is still unaffected. That's because this synthesizer lets you choose how much of an effect the LFO is gonna have on the main oscillator. This VCO mod knob will control how much the LFO can modulate the voltage controlled oscillator. A tiny bit's gonna sound like a nice vibrato, and a large amount is gonna sound like a screaming siren. Just like the main oscillator, you can change the LFO wave type. You can change it between a square wave or a triangle wave. Triangle waves are gonna give you a more gradual, kind of slidey modulation, and square waves are gonna give you harder, much more mechanical sounding modulation. Also, there's nothing stopping you from raising the LFO rate high enough to where it can be heard, and again, having this harmonize with the main oscillator. Just keep in mind that it is a circuit designed for very low frequencies, so you won't be able to play it very easily using a keyboard. So now you can generate a beautiful tone, but that goes on and on and on forever. Sounds in real life all have a start and an end. Think of something like a coin dropping. The coin hits the floor with a percussive thud, then swirls around a bit before trailing off to a complete stop. To recreate this, we're gonna generate a tone that has a loud beginning and a soft 
tapered finish. To control the start and stop of a sound, we're gonna go into the attack and decay controls, better known as an envelope generator. Packaging up your sound in a nice little envelope, ready for stamps. <sighs> this channel needs sponsors. A short attack will generate a sudden noise, and a long decay can trail that sound off into the distance. On the flip side, a long attack can simulate something coming towards you, or say something like a string instrument. And a short decay will simulate something stopping very suddenly. And if you do want a note to go on and on forever, like a drone, this sustain switch will let you hold down a note for as long as you want. And you can also just flip open the amplifier circuit here to just keep chugging out a tone. Let's go back to the coin dropping. To recreate the first part of the sound, we need a low, slightly muffled impact thud. Then we want a swirling sound to happen as the coin is settling. And then we want the entire sound to trail off. So here's the whole sound reconstructed using a single tone on the synth. So you can have tons of fun recreating some of the sounds around you. You just have to deconstruct them into a nice start, middle, and end first. Then think of things like tone and pitch. When I first got the synth in Asheville, I was surrounded by the sounds of the beautiful North Carolina mountains, the wind through trees, insects chattering, it is absolutely amazing to me that this synthesizer can do so much with just an electrical current. And the best part is you can actually start rewiring the synthesizer and just messing with the order of the circuitry using this 32 point patch bay. You can spend literally hours upon hours finding new ways to combine the circuits on the synthesizer to discover new sounds that you can now generate. And we will talk about the patch bay in an upcoming tutorial, I just can't say when that's going to drop because Teenage Engineering keeps dropping these new products that are just so much fun to talk about. What I can tell you now is that that Mother 32 also sports a 32-step sequencer, which lets you plug in notes via this keyboard and then plays them back to you in various ways, including this awesome random mode. It has so much more than just sound generation going on for it, so I had to make a whole video just on the sequencer that you can now check out here. Anyways, I've been Shines. We'll catch you in the next video.